In my opinion, the data shows that telomere shortening probably has the greatest negative impact on human aging and age-related diseases, at least more than any other one thing that we can see or point out. So I'm not saying that telomeres cause human aging, therefore activating telomerase as much as possible in, in as many human cells as possible is probably our current best intervention to slow, stop, and maybe even reverse aspects of human aging or maybe all of human aging and age-related diseases. That was a mouthful, but I'm trying to get this. Let me step back for a second. You know, I used to get residents that come in and I'd be training them and I'd ask them what was their job and they said their job was to diagnose the patient. And I'd say, no, it's not. I bet your job is to make the patient's life better. Now, that often, not always, that often involves finding the diagnosis. Pretty standard part of it. But that's not your job. Your job is to make the patient's life better if that's at all possible. That's a different thing. No patient wants to just come in, be told something in Latin and go home. They want to know if you can make their life better. Correct. And you can't always do it. But the same thing is really true with regard to age-related disease and aging. I sometimes say I have no interest in what causes aging, except as it helps me understand where I can intervene. The question I have is not what causes aging, which turns out to be a necessary part of the second part of this sentence. My interest is where is the single most effective point of clinical intervention and financial intervention that lets me cure and prevent age-related disease. But where is the most effective place to make somebody's life better? And the answer to that is almost certainly the telomere. It's not the only place. Uh, let me give you an analogy. Um, you know, if there are always alternatives. If you come in with coronary artery disease, uh, we can do a coronary artery bypass graft, replace some of the coronary arteries. We can do stents. Uh, we can simply put you on a number of drugs, for example, stents. We can do a heart transplant. None of that affects the underlying process of age-related disease. It may be useful, but it also tends to be expensive and uncomfortable and costs, you know, it's, it's, there are problems, side effects. Um, so my question still is, is there a more effective way that's safe, cheaper, works better? And there is. There are lots of ways to do this. Um, but even when we're looking at, even when we understand aging, um, I'm thinking about, let me give you an example here of Alzheimer's again. There are a number of things that increase the rate of cell aging in the human brain. Um, among them, um, the chronologic age, obviously, you know, you get older, you increase your risk. There are a certain number of gene risks, genetic risks, that increase your aging rate, essentially, in the cells of your brain. Uh, for example, if you have a, a double allele of APOE4, it increase your risk fairly substantially. Um, you can have trauma, head trauma, close head injuries, for example, football players and so forth. Um, or any other cause of trauma. Uh, infections of the brain, whether viral, fungal, you know, uh, bacterial, uh, chlamydial. Um, there are a number of things. Radiation can increase that rate of damage. Um, so a number of things play into cell aging in the brain. If I look downstream, there are a number of things that occur. So for example, as my cells age in my brain, uh, I, I will end up with amyloid plaques and tau tangles and mitochondrial dysfunction and inflammatory cell changes all of which I could go into in detail, but the point is a number of things happen downstream. Now, if I wanted to prevent Alzheimer's, I could probably just go after beta amyloid, doesn't work. Just go after tau tangles, doesn't work. I could go after both, which might work a little better, but I'm still leaving out a lot of other things. So I'm, I'm sort of doing whack-a-mole. Um, or I could go upstream and I could say, let's make sure you don't get infections. Let's make sure you don't get trauma. Let's make sure that we fix the genes that uh, increase your risk. Let's do all those things. Again, sort of a whack-a-mole phenomenon. The question is, is there some central point at which there's a, an effective point of intervention that is cheap and, a, cheap and that will do a good job? And the answer is yes. It has to do with changing the pattern of gene expression and telomere length. And even there, I could say, listen, I'm dealing here with a thousand genes, all of which have changed their expression slightly. The epigenetic expression of those genes is a little different. I could use a thousand different treatments, one for each different genetic expression. Or, I could use the telomere itself, which modulates all those. Same question. Where is the most effective point of intervention? It's the telomere. It is not that telomeres cause aging. It is not that telomeres cause Alzheimer's. It's not the point. The question is, how can I make it better? That's the point.